This is Module 2, Pumps and Applications, Chapter 2.7, Water Hammer. Water Hammer is the formation of pressure waves due to a sudden change in liquid velocity inside a piping system. It can have very destructive effects. The key issues for the practitioner and the designer are when it can appear, what is the maximum or minimum pressure estimation, what means do we have to reduce the peak pressures. The causes of water hammer can be classified according to the type of failure. We can find technical failures, human failures and design failure. Technical failures can appear because of component malfunctioning or power failure. The typical human failure consists of a mistake in operating the system. Inside design failures we can find that the piping system was designed for a steady flow. These are examples of the origin of water hammer a quick valve closure, a pump start or stop, switching pumps, altering pump or valve condition, power failure of a pump motor or inexpert operation. The estimation of the peak pressures is mostly based on one-dimensional inviscid models. The simulation of transient waves can be derived from unsteady one-dimensional wave equations. More elaborate theories can take into account viscosity, multi-phase flow effects, and so on. To estimate the peak pressure, we have to distinguish two cases, depending whether the change of the velocity inside the pipe is sudden or slow. Sudden closures are those in which the closing time is smaller than the wave's propagation and return time. In this case, the peak pressure is estimated according to the Joukowsky Alievi theory. If that condition is not met, the closure is slow and the peak pressure can be estimated according to Michel's theory. The speed of propagation of waves inside a fluid is also called celerity. It depends on the liquid density and its elastic module, the pipe diameter, thickness and support type, and the pipe elastic module. For example, for water in iron pipes, it is something between 800 meters per second and 1400 meters per second depending on the pipe characteristics. Here you can find the mathematical expression to calculate the celerity. In this slide we find some properties of common fluids which are relevant to the calculation of the celerity. This table shows the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio of common materials used in pipes. This slide shows how to calculate the constant C for thin walled pipes. Depending on the pipe anchoring condition, we have a distinct constant. As mentioned before, for sudden closures, the pressure variation is estimated according to the Joukowsky Alievi theory. In that case, the variation in pressure expressed in column of liquid equals the celerity times the velocity variation divided by the gravity acceleration. In slow closures, Michaud's theory estimates that the pressure variation expressed in column of liquid equals twice the length of the pipe times the variation of the velocity 
divided by the acceleration of the gravity and the closing time. If more detail is required, for instance, the behavior of the pressure and velocity along the pipe as a function of time, more sophisticated models are needed, such as the inviscid transient wave equations. This is an example of the pressure wave induced by a sudden closure of the discharge valve or a pump failure. At A, you can see the initial condition. The pump is pumping a liquid to the reservoir. After the valve is closed, the fluid stops and a depression is formed which travels downstream. Diagram B. The wave reaches the reservoir C and reflects back to the pipe, inducing a negative velocity and restoring the pressure. D. When this wave arrives again to the valve, E, the fluid is stopped and a new pressure wave is propagated downstream, F. As a result, this is the ideal wave pattern that we can find at the position of the discharge valve. Note the alternating pressure pattern between the maximum and minimum pressure values. The previous slides show the behavior of the water hammer with an unreturned valve on the delivery pipe. If there is not a non-return valve on the delivery pipe, when the wave reaches the valve again, the pump works in turbine mode, reversing rotation and reaching the runaway speed. These are some remedies to alleviate water hammer. One can change the design to decrease the liquid pipe velocity or use systems with an increased moment of inertia with flywheels or use bypass pipes or search tanks which can be two-way or one-way, air chambers, non-return valves, pressure control valves, vacuum valves and special brakes. This is an example of using a two-way search tank to alleviate water hammer. You can see here in the middle the liquid tank which lets liquid in and out. This diagram shows an air chamber where the compressed air helps reduce the size of the tank. This is an example of calculating the water hammer induced by a valve closure. Inside a pipe, we have water traveling at 2 meters per second. The pipe is an anchor steel pipe of 200 meters length. The closing time is 5 seconds. First of all, we compute the constant C for an anchored elastic pipe. Then, we calculate the celerity and the critical time, which must be compared with the closing time. Since the closing time is larger than the critical time, the closure is slow. Therefore, the increase of pressure is given by Michaud's expression, resulting in 16 meters of column of water. This slide shows an example of evolution of pressure and flow rate because of a power failure. When protective measures are applied, like a flywheel or an air chamber, the effect of water hammer is strongly alleviated. To conclude the chapter, this slide shows a list of references for further reading.